Welcome back, dear viewers. We are heading into the semifinal round, a big old round eight. Round eight of our nine round tournament, Tamron. It's insane. It's, been it's such absolutely a long day. insane. And things are getting very intense. We've got a super cool, heated matchup for you guys this time. We've got two big old titans here, right? Two big old titans of, of Omaha, in fact. Yeah, two national champions. Uh, your current UK national champion and an old uh, uh, US national champion. Uh, we've got Bear Bryant versus Jacob Johnson playing Momo and uh, Tokoyami, two staples of set two meta. Oh, absolutely. Bringing in on the heat for set three. Absolutely. We're going to go ahead and just cut straight to the game and we'll talk about uh, what yeah. each Let, of these let's, players let's and characters it. bring to the yeah. table. I mean, two, two very, very strong contenders. Uh, you know, arguably the best decks of two different eras of last format, right? Tokugami right. being the really premier deck in the first era, um, Asui being kind of in the middle, and then Momo being the big deck at the end of, of, of those three eras of our last season of competitive play. Now coming into season, our, our, our brand new format with Set 3 Heroes Clash, bringing a, a handful of new things to, to a lot of these a lot of these builds of these decks, Chaos Tokoyami, uh, Barrett Bryant being the pilot of, uh, that just being such a, a premier, premier staple aggro deck right now. Uh, Chaos just offering so much. You know, this is the second time we've seen this deck on stream today. We, we know its power, we know its capabilities, we know its ceiling. Uh, and when you put a really good player behind it, like Barrett Bryant, it just gets crazy. Holy cow, is that a build six? That's a build six hold two. <laughs> yeah. I'd be quaking. I'd be absolutely quaking in my boots if I was Jacob. Johnson right now, but also if I was Jacob Johnson, I'd be a much better player of this game. So maybe, maybe <laughs> I'm not quaking. Jacob, I know he's got a plan. He wouldn't take Momo if it wasn't for a reason. Uh, he put this deck together uh, for the sole purpose of of beating Kirishima too, from what I understand. Uh, but now he's got the other cornerstone of the meta right now. Tokoyami staring down his throat. Uh, I've been playing Tokoyami. Uh, actually, fun fact, uh, Bear Bryant and I have been working on this exact list for about the past three weeks. Okay. Um, if I were to play at this tournament, I think the list that I'd be playing and the list that Bear is playing is four cards different. Mm -hmm. um, and it's literally he added four cards. Everything else is exactly the same. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, Tim Keefe and uh, Kevin Broberg were labbing Fire Tokoyami set two versus Momo set two, and they came to the conclusion that the matchup was nigh impossible for Tokoyami to win just because of the sure defense that that Momo has. And so my question is: is what tools under now a new symbol does Tokoyami have to fight Momo um, as as we move on into into this um, back alley for one, which is now landed. Is a is a big tool, but what what happens? Yeah, I mean, what has changed, right? Tokoyami just didn't have the power to break through Momo's defenses before. What has changed in set three? I mean, uh, not just going into a new symbol, right? From fire to chaos, going into a new set, yeah. right? That's really the big thing here. Is now we've got so many new tools, things like petty squabble, things like one with nature for essentially speed, right? Things like twisting azure for also essentially speed a lot more ways to just break through the absolute wall that is momo's ironclad defense um and i think that's what we're going to see barrett try and put out here i mean the 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 new the new cards offer tokoyami so much raw stats uh, that it's questionable if even momo can survive these types of turns anymore um momo is not without innovation herself though i mean for one the big thing the big thing last format right was the life momo decks that those yeah. were the momo decks that's not what we're looking at tamron we're looking no. at a good symbol momo deck which i uh whenever i played momo in set one uh good was exclusively the symbol you played on right um you played uh all these super good symbol cards uh tailoring not just momo's kit but also um uh i lost her name Jiro? Jiro as well. Jiro. Thank you. Her uh, best friend. Yeah, her best friend. Her best friend. Um, you also got Jiro's uh, kits as well. Um, playing. Wow, that was a really good squabble. Um, uh, having a lot of draw power, draw manipulation. Uh, yeah. And a lot of those tools that you got, uh, uh, the big tool for life being um, rescue completed, it's just not here, right? And so how much commit minus speed then destroy minus speed with Momo um, is going to get us there. But what are the tools or access for, for good? We'll have to... Yeah, I mean, we're see. looking at a lot of cool things on uh, Jacob's board right now. The Manly Passionate Guy 
really, really, really big card, of course. Um, the ability to just infinitely build down your blocks between right. something like Momo and Manly is just very, very, very powerful. Uh, block with your weapons, build them down. Block with your non-weapon foundations, build them down with Manly. Uh, it's just a lot of really, really strong defensive power. Um, another really, really cool thing that the good symbol brings to the table is uh, small and limber, right? Everyone knows how good small and limber is in Momo. Uh, and then we found out, hey, we just have better small and limber on life in Amphibious. Right. We don't have Amphibious anymore. We, do <laughs> we don't have that anymore. Yeah. So go into the good symbol. You kind of get your Amphibious back in a card like Small and Limber. Um, a lot of interesting tech as well. Stuff like Invisible Infiltration right there. Very, very, very cool attack in this character. Um, already seen some very powerful manly plays there, building the study group leader down. At the same time, though, the study group leader not being the craziest card in the deck anymore because we don't have rescue completed to combo with it. Right. So, you know, there's the give, there's the take, there's the repeated give and take of going back and forth between these two symbols. Um, another really, really cool thing that... Uh, that we have going to the good symbol is we've got uh, we've got Coda's attack right we've got command pigeon flock to build in an ally foundation surprise surprise study group leader is an ally foundation absolutely being able to build that card in on demand is very powerful um, so there's a lot of interesting tech that comes from transitioning over to the good symbol and we still get a lot of the staple cards right we still get our passing the torches we still get our our cannon blasts you know a lot of the really really key pieces of our game plan are still ever present uh, in the good symbol and I'm sure in JJ's deck. Absolutely. This is the world's fastest, biggest, scariest Dark Shadow Ruin coming in. Yeah, this thing's massive. So we got plus one, plus one from the Summon Dark Shadow. We got plus two, plus two from the Frozen Slash, and it got an extra plus one, plus one from both the basic training and the Easy Excited coming in. This thing started at an eight high for uh, nine. That's going to get an extra plus three, plus stats from everything else and the stun. I mean, this is... Uh, one of the one of the big things that Frozen Slash gives the deck under Chaos as opposed to Fire is uh, the, this... Uh, this ability to make my summons just a little bit tighter. Yeah, I mean, the stat lines are just insane, right? Uh, but Momo's minus two speed and these double manly passionate guys uh, building on both of our previous blocks is pretty crazy. Holding the, the, the double high block foundation, very, 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 very powerful to deal with Tokoyami's moves and clear our progressive blocking difficulty. Uh, we still have Momo's removed to pick up something if need be, and we've still got a card in hand that we can definitely block with. Yeah. Uh, and we also built out a second copy if it can't be fixed. Meaning all of these stun ones on all of these super cool Dark Shadow Ruins that we're playing don't really exist. Yeah, check out a three here on this uh, on this five, six, seven. Gonna be curtains, I think. Yeah, it really sucks. That really sucks. Committing four cards here is not gonna be fun. Yeah, it, it, it. I don't think it necessarily is like the end of the game per se, but it certainly puts us in a position where you know um, we are not feeling great about it. Absolutely. Um, you know, but like we we've got to press damage somehow, all right? Um, but are we even going to press damage with this move is the question, right? Is there is there a high block weapon in our discard pile that we can grab with Momo if need be? Because, like, speed-wise, this, this attack is very, very blockable. It, it, it's Correct. super blockable. Yeah. With all the resources that we have ready, um, not to mention um, being able to give minus speed with uh, with Momo. Yeah, this is, uh, this is probably another full block, which stinks because, like, you know, ruins the way that we kill people, and we've played two on this turn and gotten absolutely no advantage for yeah, it. Yeah, we're, we're three massive attacks in, and we have simply just not progressed our game state. If anything, we actually we drew the Bonds of Friendship. Absolutely That's crazy. Good. That's pretty Nuts. Good. And hey. check the six. Absolutely. Huh. Oh, J Jacob Johnson built different, man. Yeah, that's all right. Um, yeah. That's pretty good. That's very, very, very good. I mean, if anything, we actually regressed our game state this turn uh, because we allowed JJ to build two foundations, right, from those manly blocks. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. We 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 threw three attacks, and an, our reward for that was our opponent built two foundations. Yeah. That does not feel very good. Um, uh, as as Barrett Bryant. This is unless something drastic happens. I mean, this is just a win for Jacob. Um. Yeah, he's in an extremely comfortable position right now. His stage is so set up. Um, the best window for for Tokoyami to deal damage, that being turn two, has passed. Right. And zero damage has been dealt. Yeah. Um, it's it's interesting to see you know the the absolute aggro monster powerhouse that we've seen uh, you know uh, for from Tokoyami across this whole tournament event. Uh, seeing a deck like Momo actually stop it in its tracks is very 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 interesting, um, uh, and especially like such like a new Momo deck, right? The good symbol again, and we're seeing some more really really nice good symbol tech here. Special sound is fantastic, right? We may not have rescue completed for minus two to everything, but we do have a free minus three to one thing. True, as well as that. like we've got so much draw power on the good symbol that like you know that little peak. Maybe I did want that that card in my hand. Right. I've got passing. I've got uh, preparing for battle. I've got so many ways to just add it up. 
uh, that you're not losing it good versus uh, good versus life. Yeah, and I mean we were like so free to use our cannon blasts now to our to our heart's content. All of our steady group leaders, double steady group leader is going to make our cannons very very big for very very free here. Yeah. And uh, I mean real talk, Barrett has two ready foundations. <laughs> Yeah, double cannon is probably going to close this game out. Um, uh, otherwise, we're just going to like nuke our entire board of this release and attempt to to make some sort of. Uh, yeah, I mean that's the happen. only way we're blocking things in the slightest. Um, and at the end of the day, like Jacob can always just destroy something to get that essentially that that minus two speed that release is provided to get that right back. Right. Um, yeah. Do do we have another cannon in our discard pile? We've already picked one up. We've already picked uh, yeah, one up. Yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's two cannons coming this turn. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is so this the, is the a... three check there means this next cannon is just super unblockable. Correct. But the question is, can we get it to 16? That's, that's I don't know if we can get it to question. 16, but we could probably oh oh, oh. or five six six of three or five six. Easy enough. Yeah, we get to blink one of our study group leaders now, so we can cannon it again. Yeah, that's we get to good. build down this quick create so that we can pump damage on the cannon as well. That very, very. Uh, um, I I wonder if like Jacob counted the damage between that cannon and that infiltration and said, "Huh, I'm too off. Let me let me play this this quick create first and right. then build it down on my next move." Uh, just man, the utility of Momo is absolutely insane. The utility of Momo is so crazy good. Uh, yeah, blinking out. Uh. The uh, looks like as opposed to the study group leader, we're, we're picking a precious lesson. Yeah, I mean, to that get card that extra foundation doesn't count as two foundations. It is two foundations. It is. It straight up is two foundations. This one plus build one off the top. Yeah, that card checks a four for a reason. Um, and beautiful five check on is. that one. Going yeah. Going to game two. Wait, Wait, you remember right that one time that uh that the Momo versus Tokiyami game? They they got OTK'd. Yeah. Like that. Remember it was when it was Momo? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was definitely uh they, they they had a little bit of a of a role reversal there, man. A little bit of a role reversal there. Uh yeah, really, really crazy to see a deck that can like just punish Tokoyami so hard so fast. Uh and that's just the power of Momo, right? Um yeah. uh, the ability to say, huh, two cannons does kill you here. Well, I drew one, so let me go grab the other one, and uh that's all she wrote. Yeah, and and the other big thing here is um there's not a, uh, there's not a big, um, there's no risk on Momo's side, right? She Absolutely. The game. She started into the game at 26. Yeah. And so even though we did have some offensive front, um, yeah, there was still nothing, nothing to be done about it. Nothing to be said. Yeah. I mean, you know, Barrett's hand had two Dark Shadow Ruins and a Frozen Slash, so kind of just have to play those cards, right? As yeah. as Tokoyami, you know, you have to do what your what your deck is designed to do. And unfortunately, Jacob's deck was designed to say I actually don't care at all about about what you're doing right there. Uh, I've got all the high blocks in the world and I'm just not worried about your moves. Yeah. It's a pretty choice draws from uh from Jacob as well. Very very choice. Very choice builds as well. I mean, again, the double manly was massive. Yeah, I think absolutely massive. Once again, I think you can't find a life symbol, right? So maybe the uh the sacred gods, the sacred cows um, are coming home to pasture. Um, be innovative, be creative when it comes to your deck building and the choices and the how many cards that are open and available in the MHACCG. Um, if, there's a, if there's a problem, the game has given you a solution to it. You just got to go find it. Yeah, absolutely. It's very cool to see this deck. And uh, another player I've been watching really, really closely uh, today. We haven't had him on, uh, but Kevin Broberg is running around with a life Momo post uh, that's updated post set three. Right. And it's really cool to see both of these very, very, very good players playing this very good character in very different ways when set three really didn't give either of them a whole lot to work with, right? Yeah, completely agree. Yeah, but it's super cool to see the, the innovation uh, going on to that deck. What is a uh, what does Baron have to do to take this game? What are your thoughts? I, I think he might just have to accept the fact that he has to play way slower than than he's normally used to. Yeah. Because uh, I just don't know that there's a world where uh you get to kill Momo on turn two when you have like five foundations. Yeah. Not unless you've got like the nuttiest hand. Yeah. Saw, yeah. You know, if you play saw, Twisting Azure, Twisting Azure, Twisting Azure, right? Maybe. Right. maybe yeah. Maybe you nuke her from orbit, right? Super. Yeah. Su you know, th there's like some Dreamland scenarios. But unless we're finding that, I think we might just have to spend a couple extra turns building. Right. Yeah, sculpting a, a seven attack hand, a couple actions, drawing cards off of frigids. Yep. Uh, the, uh, I think there's, I think there's a getting some petty squabble plays lined yeah. up. You know, 
Uh, especially in an instance where, like, maybe JJ gets one card in hand, removes to go pick up his block. Now we say Petty Squabble, discard those two. Right. Get, get, get rid of that block you just, you just acquired. Yeah, that's pretty uh, good. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's definitely... There's, Barrett is not without tech for this matchup, for sure. Um... It, it, it just that that game definitely goes to show uh, that he's not able to run into a character like Momo the, the way he's able to do pretty much anyone else in the format save for maybe Kirishima too. Right, right, right. right. Um, See how strong and, of a build we can get. Yeah, I mean, and off. It, it, I mean, it's, it's crazy, right? Chaos, Even right? with that, yeah, the zeros, right? The zeros. Rough build four pass. Not really what you want to see. Um, get build five would have been absolutely clutch here. Uh, not necessarily because of the plus one damage uh, that the uh, foundation was going to give you, but it's plus one to your check for committing the foundation. Right. Would have been nice. Yeah, for sure. Um, some more very interesting tech in JJ's deck here. We have the uh, the 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 symbol of peace card, the action card. That's super interesting. I uh, I actually really really like that card in this deck. I think that's some really really cool tech. Uh, for those decks that want to go really, really, really wide against you, right. you just block with your whole hand and then say, okay, I'll play this guy. I'm going to just draw like three or four cards. And there's a character that, like, the only reason that, that Momo dies is because she literally runs out of cards in her hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the character's blocking power is nigh infinite. Um, and most of the time, you're not playing this card on, like, anything more than a three because you are just building down every single block you play. Correct. Right? So it's, like, really easy for them to be, like, four attacks deep and for you to just play this on a two or on a three and just draw four for free. And then it itself says that uh, it your block modifiers get minus one, so it essentially doesn't count towards progressive. Yeah, it also does not count towards progressive in, in that sense as well. So really, really, really cool utility card there. Um, so... So far, and not changing it up. We got we got we got Barrett going in on on turn two here. Uh, at the same time, though, it's with a Crow and Frog, right? Very very minimal risk of a of a, of a card to play. Yeah, and we talked I'm about that sure earlier how today. How middle this uh, this play is. Um, but I think that's that's the big thing, right? Is like we were we were okay with uh, dealing zero damage on, on on our first attack turn of last game. What was not okay is when we had to commit four foundations to deal zero damage. Right. That that's what what really nipped us in the bud, right? So we are we're putting the dark shadow down though. So we we're we're down to play some more moves this turn, um, but we're just gonna see the same thing. We're gonna see that uh that nice perfect one high block come in, and then mainly in the foundation bring it on down. At the same time though, JJ is actually a little committed out now, so we might be able to find a window here to to put some damage on board um, as as Barrett, especially with a card like Heat Wave coming down uh, on let's see yeah on a six checking a six, very 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 beautiful to see. Um, and now we're just gonna really, really, uh, we're just gonna judge now uh, how much blocking power Jacob can leverage with that with that tiny little stage he's got going on, right? Right. I mean, we can we can destroy a thing minus two speed, ready our small and limber, have three things to commit, so we can more than likely pass one more block. After that, though, that's where my my, my, my doubts start to begin. Yeah, especially with uh, more speed coming in with these uh, some of our shadows, if we happen to to have them, right? Um, the real question here is. Do we have a uh, Ooh, another, four damage? Is big. I have seen, I think, three ruins in our discard pile. The chances of us having another ruin um, in hand is going to be slim to none. Um, For sure, yeah. I mean, that's the big damage move is is the ruin, of course. Uh, the second Dark Shadow is going to help a lot, too, though. At this point, uh, between a Stronger and Darkness on board as well, everything is massive damage. Yeah. Um, every move right now is plus four damage. Every move right now is plus two, plus four. Um, the, 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 that is where every do attack... Have the ruin. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yep. What a monster! We actually are just beasts. <clears throat> actually five, crazy. Five, six, seven, eight. We need to check a five here. We need to check a five here. Like, our life depends on it. Yeah, and we checked our... We checked an eight. <laughs> oh, wait. Hold on. <laughs> hold up now. Now they're burning that high. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah our, this is you know, great. Our, our dark shadow is, is, is here to save us and get rid of all of these, uh, these, these, these pesky progressive difficulties, right? Do you stun here? I with two of them. I don't think I can stun here. Yeah. So the thing about the thing about stun stunning here. here is it does give them more foundations to exist because we have a indiscriminate shock happening. So we actually want them to have mm. more foundations possibly, right? That is always a thing to consider. Uh, but that's also if like they actually have to. I don't. Know, yeah. I mean, if I plan on jamming the indiscriminate, it's very possible that I stun here. Uh, because I plan on stunning two more when I play my indiscriminate. Correct. So at that point, if I'm if I'm getting all three of my stuns, that outweighs the two you're gonna get. Yeah, yeah we're going for the stun here. It's a Makes sense. plus one uh, damage because you've yeah. built them at the extra foundation, right? And it's and it's more damage because like we gotta get we gotta get the the cards committed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Um, so it looks like we're anticipating that as well as JJ because we destroyed our ready foundation with Momo. For, for minus two speed. That's Wowza. pretty good. On a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This is 15 damage. Um, uh, 5, 6, 7. Checks a 5. Yeah, yeah, this is 14 damage. This is uh, f this is definitely 14 damage. Between It starts out at 9, and JJ's got 5 committed things right now. We're going to stun one 6 committed things. Yeah, this is a 15 damage move. Yeah, uh, if we have a 1 low block... We can make it happen. If we have a two low block, we can make it happen. Yeah, because it's gonna have it's gonna get rid of its minus its plus two speed from Momo. We're gonna build that down, we're gonna heal one. Um now they now Barrett Barrett can say uh, I'll commit one, you commit one. Uh, oh we can we can change its speed to four. Well we certainly can. And we definitely should. Oh we definitely should. Zero reason. Oh, there, there it is. is. Nice. There it is. Beautiful Change heads up blood. It to four. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. I mean, that might be it now. Depending. And then there's the I commit one, you commit one. Uh, Nine, now we uh, 12, 15, have to have. 15. This is exactly lethal. Yeah, we can have a two low and, and check a five. Commit our character for six. What do we have? We have a. Oh, three it's low. not a seven. Got to check a six, hey, buddy. That didn't happen. All right. Game oh three. my goodness. Game three. All right. I mean, I mean. Okay. So like, you asked me at the beginning of that, what does Barrett have to do differently? That. Uh, go first. He's got to go first. <laughs> He's got to go first so that he can do that. Yeah, that was that was actually a clinic of, oh, yeah. of how you leverage the uh, the moves. Um, it, it's interesting. I actually think like the the real win there was exclusively off of Frigid, right? Giving yeah. him the giving him the the tools to dig a little deeper in his deck. Um, because I'm pretty sure we found the indiscriminate shock off of that frigid we draw too. We definitely did. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, being able to see your your nine cards, right, as Tokoyami is just crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, Eleven, right? If you have a petty squabble in play, like, it just gets crazier and crazier and crazier. Yeah. It's very good. <laughs> yeah. It's very good. Man, actually, Chris, it's like, we did check a three as JJ on that last block, so the, the encouraging training partner didn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but man, how hype would it have been? If that was what made the difference. Um, either way, very, very beautiful heads-up play by Barrett. Um, and very good awareness as well from JJ um, when it comes to uh, to anticipating the indiscriminate shock. Completely agree. Yeah, Completely just unfortunate totally that the, the blocks did not did not play out that way for him to be able to, to stop it. Uh, this is going to be an incredible uphill battle for Barrett. Um, Jacob getting to go first. We saw the <laughs> clinic that he ran. Uh, uh, going back and forth. I mean, both these players are absolutely titans of the game. Um, s two of the smartest people in this room. Agreed. Um, it, it, I'm excited to see how they uh, navigate the first, um, the, the last uh, half of this this game. Yeah, it's gonna be a very intense game three. Um, very cool too, right? Because we have like two of the best players uh, from the Omaha area uh, representing very very different sides of the equation right now. Right, very, very different, completely different alliances here. Uh, one of them playing a very, very aggressive deck, the other playing a very, very defensive deck. Uh, really cool to see how they're, how they're, how they're clashing here. You know, we we had last round we had a very, very, very cool narrative constructed with uh, Kyle versus Keenan, and the the narrative flavor just continues to emerge uh, throughout the rounds of this tournament, telling telling this intricate story with all of these weaving parts. Just need to get the extra, the asset on his, yeah. his hand. That yeah, yeah. Right. Like, do we? Well, also we have sixes in our deck, right? Correct. We have bonds of friendship in our deck. We've seen that card. There, there's a world where that that does pass on a miracle. Heck, maybe there's some buddy blocks in our deck for all we know. True, there could there, be. There always be buddy blocks, man. I, there's I never wanna, a bad time for a buddy block. I want to uh, jump on your point of of we've got Barrett playing an aggro deck and Jacob playing a, a defensive deck. So whenever uh, a bit of a history lesson for these two players. Oh yes. Um, Barrett is a control player. He has he learned this game uh, exclusively on control. It's all he wants to play, control, control, control. And Jacob Johnson has the nickname, the Big Johnson, because of how much he he just runs it down mid just as hard as he can. He just like, he wants to slam every card on the table and just, and just pop off and go off. So the fact that these, in the My Hero format, these two players have switched, and yeah. we've got Barrett playing the aggro deck and Jacob playing the more control deck. Mm -hmm. I think it is, it's really cool to see how these players have grown and adapted um, throughout yeah. time. It's a fun historical swap too, right? Because if you, if you, if you're experienced uh, with either of these players, right, in, in the My Hero format so far, uh, we've seen Jacob playing, you know, shove it down your throat, Kirishima 2 right. in, 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 in the regional he won. And then we've seen Barrett uh, clinching multiple tops and super close uh, tournament runs with a racer head. 
Yeah. Right. So we've seen them representing those those aspects of play that we know them for. And it just seems that for nationals, they have decided to to really really uh swap it up. That's kind of an interesting thing that I've really noticed going around the room. As I see a lot of like really really big name notable players in the room. Uh, all of them having decks they're really known for playing, and they've all pivoted towards things like Hiroshima or Bird. Right. Um, and I think it just goes to re it goes to really show two aspects of this tournament that make it so different. For one, it's the the overwhelming power level of Kirishima and Tokoyami, as opposed to a lot of the rest of the decks in the field. And it's what's on the line, right? Agreed. I mean, we're, we're playing for for entryway into a $250,000 prize pool tournament. Oh. You know, this is not this is not your everyday run of the mill regional or provisional where, you know, it's you know, it's super chill to just play the deck you like the best, right? There's yeah. there's no is there's there's no shame in these players wanting to to reach the highest competitive level and playing the strongest things that they feel like they could put their hands on. Yeah, I am so enthralled in the game right now. Jacob uh, swinging on turn two with only three, four foundations. It is um, impressive, yeah. Built one in due to his uh, command pigeon flock. Right. But then checking a three and having to commit. He wanted to draw a card, remove the card with uh, invisible infiltration to get it right back. Um, how do you feel about invisible infiltration as a card? Very, very good card. Yeah. Very, very, very solid card. Um, even without uh, the breaker two aspect of it from not being Hagakure, I think the card is very good. Uh, it's a nice low attack. It's still got a solid block on it. Um, there's so many powerful interactions with bl with foundations that it can blink. You know, on things like the water symbol, you've got sticky balls and the like. On the good symbol, you've got things like passing the torch. Uh, just a lot of really, really, really choice plays with it. All right, looks like we're uh, we're it's going time. in. It's, it's time to swing. This is a giant ice wall that appears. Yep, this is a giant ice wall. Um, Stunning I mean, here is bad though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like the stun option here. I think you got a way to. Yeah, time. I'm not crazy about stunning two here. I don't want to really give Jacob two more foundations. Um, but I mean, if we're gonna go in at any point in time, I mean, I think there's just too much stun in our deck for us to ignore the it can't be fixed forever. True. Very, um, very true. I think the big, the, the main scary thing about it, though, right, is if we do not finish the game here, um, if we're going to stun more than two for the rest of this game, in the long run, it is a worthwhile trade to to stun here and let Jacob build the foundations because we're going to stun more than two by the end of the game. Right. However, uh, if we if giving those two extra foundations in totality to Jacob is what allows him to have enough of a stage to 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 kill us on the backswing, yeah. then it's not a worthy transition, right? Or a worthy transaction, I should say. Yeah. I mean, think about how we uh, lost game one, right? It was off the back of Cannon Blast, Cannon Blast. Yep. We only get to Cannon Blast, you know, all those times because of the foundations that we yeah, have. Yeah, because we have, we have a massive, change, such a massive stage, right? You know, that's what happens when you go into your rival and the only end result of it is that they built two foundations Correct. because of those manly blocks. Um, really cool to see the uh, the command pigeon flock uh, and the friend of animals kind of tech that we were talking about earlier. Cool to see that pop up uh, again. Just going to show how much interesting things the good the good symbol build of Momo has to work with. Yeah. Uh, Strutting stuff as opposed to the to the life builds that I think people are still really 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 hot on. Um, yeah, I dig it. We've got to we got to look in the discard pile because Barrett now has to make a choice, right? We had a petty squad, but I'm pretty sure that we've got a ruin and a, and a second dark shadow summon or summon dark shadow. Um, we're just gonna go for the build. I think build two is. A I mean, yeah, I mean, we've got some here. very powerful uh, pieces on board now, right? Struggling with studies, one of the premier defensive foundations uh, in the format right now, and of course, finding at least one stronger in darkness, just putting that one damage um, across the board on everything. I mean, it, it's it stacks up. Yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy, right? As a as a zero diff foundation for no cost, we're doing what uh what a three diff foundation for a discard one card from our hand costs in prone to dry eyes. Right. Absolutely crazy comparison to make when yeah. you when you really think about it that way. Obviously, stronger darkness having a bit of a condition to do something like that, but within our character, it's not quite. The Is it condition. really? Is, Is it, it really? really? Is it really? We we are we are more powerful when committed. We are stronger in darkness. Um, and uh, I mean that's like really one of the so you know we're talking about, we're talking a lot about um, the the decision on what build direction to go with a character like Momo life being the staple for so long good now showing its legs off again with Jacob's build uh, 
Kind of the same goes for Tokoyami, right? Fire has been the premier build uh, since since the beginning of time. Uh, and now Chaos really, really rising up because, of course, the great thing about Twisting Azure Inferno is it's got two Tokoyami symbols on it. It does. That, uh, that, that Dobby card's got two Tokoyami symbols on it. Um, and I think uh, the, the real hot debate lately has been what is, uh, what's the premier way to go, right? Chaos versus Fire. I know you've talked a lot about that lately because you're very, very big. As well as Barrett, you guys said you worked on this deck together yeah. on the Chaos build. What do you think it really like? What do you think defines the power of it over the Fire build? Even with the new things Fire got in set three, you know, having access to things like Season the Advantage, very, very, very powerful. Right. Um, what does the Chaos build do that edges it out over that? Straight up, the answer is um, the zero diffs. Yeah, having the zero diffs that let you build out these massive, massive uh, turns, like build six while just uh, checking fives. Uh, if I build six as Tokoyami, I'll probably kill you next turn, right? For it's, sure. The, yeah. the, the cards don't even have to necessarily even do anything, but the good news is, is all the zero diffs are good, right? Um, you've got Stronger Darkness, you've got Easily Excited, you've got Basic Training. All those cards pump stats, which is the thing that my aggro deck wants to do. Um, this is... I mean, they just they go in line with his game plan dead, very, very well. Almost dead. Right? I think we have six attacks and two blue cards. Yeah, this is uh, this is the turn. This is the turn. We have the and hand... A, and a momentum for the for more stun on the ice yeah. wall. Holy cow. I think the only thing we're missing here is... Um, uh, the only thing that we're missing is Frigid to make Squabble work. Yeah. As well as... Um, uh, Crow and Frogs for uncommittal attacks we have right. to check well but i mean we have every attack in our hand we do we do have a lot of attacks in our hand yeah i mean if we just start off strong it'll be really easy to turn from there, there it is beautiful five check on that ice wall right there uh, i mean representing stun four is gonna be really really powerful here even more if we want to like commit to like, things like frozen and such right yeah absolutely yeah, there's, there's yeah yeah the, the frozen is going to be real real big this turn um we have the chivalrous competitor if we want to just draw even more cards um, I mean, Mo Momo's got a lot of blocking power, especially with a stage like this. But man, this is a uh, if if the checks continue to go our way, Barrett's gonna be putting out like 40, 50 damage this turn. Yeah, it's simple, right? But mm -hmm. if there's a character to block 40, 50 damage, it's Momo. Absolutely, it's Momo Yaiurozu. Yeah, um, I think the only thing that I'm I'm nervous about here is the fact that we've lost our uh, uh, pass in the torch, right? One of yeah. the ways that that um, Momo got a a lot of value is um okay just right. double checking yep uh, going through our it can't be fixed responses yeah. one by one yeah petty Love squabble technically could commit one but that is a bad move yeah bad yeah move. that doesn't make a whole lot of sense no. that does not make a whole lot of sense um yeah i mean we still have just so much speed reduction though um zones is going to just be a big thing here uh but at the end of the day right. our next one gets stunned too i mean as much as much stun as we have like manly going to build down our blocks momo's going to build down our blocks uh, we have so many things to destroy from minus two speed uh, we have a small and limber to uh re-ready itself there's there's so many powerful things going on on momo's board right yeah and like like the big thing about like uh, one of one of the things that me and Bear disagree on is like when do I play Summon Dark Shadow? I'm such a play Summon Dark Shadow late kind of guy. Really, I love playing Summon Dark Shadow so so late in my chain, um, and so I could see him getting it in early just to get the extra speed, the extra damage, and like uh, a little extra committal that way. But I want to play it late so that you know I'll, I'll actually play all seven attacks in my hand. Right. We gotta we gotta see what happens there. I, mean, I think it just depends like what you're opening with, right? Obviously, if like Ruin is the best opening in your hand, you're just gonna jam it ASAP because you gotta turn your uh, your three damage stun one on as 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 soon as you possibly can. Right. Uh, but when you're opening with something like Ice Wall, that's probably gonna get blocked negligently anyway because Momo is minus speed and all of that jazz. Ice Storm coming in is very interesting. Um, not the check we wanted to see at the same time though. Now we can just start Beautiful. busting these committed foundations for Frozen. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, break, breaker one. We gotta commit one Breaks. more thing. Um, special design is gonna make this thing pretty slow. Uh, we're gonna get to stun two off of it. Stun two, break one for frozen. Say that you don't get to, you don't get the the bonus stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and the quicker we can uh, snag a, um, the quicker we can snag a a, a card in our card pool. Right? So it represents like another minus two damage, and then you can destroy it on the next one for another minus speed. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on here. 
So it looks like we're going for the remove here on Momo to pick up our preparing for battle. Uh, our stun 2 comes in. We stun the small number that we readied after destroyed for minus 2 speed. Uh, the frozen probably about to come in right here. Yep. Yeah, this, uh, this very, very scary defensive stage that Momo has is uh, slowly beginning to crumble apart yeah, as we start to stun ourselves all the way around it. Um, it we're definitely contextualizing a prepared for battle block here, and we're going to be able to manly it down. It's going to be a really, really strong play, but that is a big old plus three, plus three low block. Uh, if we check poorly on this block, it could be very, very punishing. Yeah. Um, uh, and this, this bonds of friendship is actually doing nothing. Uh, to help us out if we wanted to to like guarantee make this happen but we've got another committed foundation we can blow it up it's so cute there it is so another plus one speed yeah wow this is a six low for seven ice storm six seven eight nine ops to okay. fail that one we'll take it and uh we'll see how the rest of the turn ends up i mean we've got our dark shadow in here uh, the rune coming down on six, an eight seven, eight, eight checks, checks the eight. eight easy peasy so beautiful oh man uh, we're gonna have another stu the stun man. Yeah, the stun this turn. We've stunned. We've stunned what six this turn technically with frozen. Correct. It's gonna be seven with another frozen usage. Uh, if we opt to use it on this one, you know we don't have anything committed, so not sure if we want to go hardcore on the frozen right here. Uh, it might it might just be the equalizer though, right? And the other big thing here is um, as we are are working with uh, these, we can't even like commit these uh, these. Uh, quick creates to, to add things in for minus damage because like we're gonna be threatening you know 10 11 12 damage yeah. moves the minus two to damage actually isn't even gonna matter and we have the second summon dark shadow which is just Four crazy insane. on a five yeah oh it is five you're right yeah, i missed on a the five. first giant ice wall yep yep um but it's okay that's not gonna count now now we've got a committed one so we can frozen it uh our next Correct. check has plus three um this isn't unblockable by any means but i'm pretty sure the next one is uh, we're going to um, feeling cute for another speed. Yeah, ah, actually crazy. We just want we just want uh, Jacob to commit as many resources as we can in order to force this block to happen. Yeah, this is a lethal move. You gotta have the high block. Um, it's on a five. Uh, five. We got a what a one high, two high. Yeah, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if I check the 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 five, I commit my last two resources. There's an indiscriminate shock that's gonna be coming in for the the rest of the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. We do we do have an indiscriminate. Um, and there's just no world where we can fail it. Uh, yeah, the, the, man, the Frozen. The Frozen here putting in so much work. Uh, frozen, Giant Ice Wall, uh, into Giant Ice Wall, into Ruin. We had stun four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, yeah. this was commit eight resources, please. Uh, incredible. Incredible. A lot of people fell off on Frozen. Um, and I think, genuinely, I think he's in the deck. Wow, sirs. And there it is. That's it. Barrett Bryant yeah. takes it down with Tokyo. He said, I got two. He I said, two. Punk, there's two more. I got two big he's shots. Like, Buddy, you didn't two let me play shots. my two 20 damage moves, yeah, man. How what lame. the heck? How lame. Yeah, wow, dude. Just, I mean, insane, right? Um, pretty much the complete opposite of what of the of the, theor the theorizations that, that you told me you and Tim Keith had experienced playing this exact matchup in the set two world. Where no matter what he did, Tokyami just couldn't break through Momo's defenses. Those games felt like the exact opposite. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I mean, we didn't even get the big Titan bombs at the end with the uh, the indiscriminate shocks, right? Yeah, it like goes off the back of of. Uh, uh, I, I think every attack that was in his card pool had the fire symbol on it, right? Mm -hmm. We could have made that happen um, on the fire symbol as well. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But it, you know, just depends on what foundations does Chaos give you, you know, right. to, to make it happen, which is so cute right yeah yeah i mean a lot of stuff a lot of stuff put in a lot of work there you know things like easily excited right feeling cute um just a lot of really really good applications there um obviously frozen has a fire symbol as well uh but there's also where we're like what if that frozen is uh say a one with nature right again just the applications of the chaos symbol i think you can really go either way with tokoyami and it's still you're gonna achieve very similar results either way um but i'm beginning to see why the chaos build edges it out just a little more um across across the board especially into a character like momo uh where just those stuns are oh so so important they're very very good yeah. Yeah, I mean, Indiscriminate was the card that took down uh, the other game, right? That that was the reason we were able to push through those those walls that Momo put up. Um, and I mean, you know, Jacob Jacob Johnson, he, he put up great walls. You know, he, he did everything he could to survive this onslaught. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, like, like we said, the ceiling on Tokoyami, it's simply not there sometimes. Correct. It's simply not there sometimes. And again, when you're in the hands of a really, really good pilot like Barrett Bryant, he's just going to take it down.
True. Speaking of Bear Bryant, we're going to get a small word with him. Um, we're going to get an interview happening. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back. What's up, everybody? We are back with the winner of this round. Round eight, correct? <laughs> Round eight, yeah, round one left, one eight, left. Round eight, Bear Bryant piloting to Chaos Tokoyami. Tell me about this awesome, amazing stud-filled deck that you played. <laughs> one of the coolest decks I've ever seen, truly. With um, that sarcasm? With, no, oh, it's sick. Okay. It's um, so, so sick. Uh, so uh, as most of the community, and as you know me, as one of the people I play test a lot with and deck tech with, um, I'm not an aggro player. I'm not a big aggro player. Granted, when I won nationals in 2018, I was playing a very aggressive character, but uh, it's just, it doesn't, I don't feel in control. And I would say the one thing that kind of sold me on this version of Tokoyami under Chaos specifically is, yes, you can kill somebody on turn two. Yes, you can punch, you can pump up a bunch of damage and stats on cards and speed and fake speed with things like one with nature. But having cards like release, struggling with studies, um, I want to say even like it, oh, irrefutable force of nature, which you get under fire as well. Sure. Um, and I've got to I've got to really shout out the new plus ultra pack cards as well. Specifically, um, evil versus good, which you didn't see me bring out in this game, um, as a really nice second action to play under chaos. That's not concentrate. Uh, while also being able to play Petty Squabble. Like, Petty Squabble is such a big buff to the Chaos symbol across the board for characters that tap themselves or are okay right. with tapping themselves, offensive or defensively, and the response on it. Um, then that last game three, there was so much where I was like, I wanted Jacob to play at any point the responsibility on the Yao yeah, Yorozi uh, study group leader so that I could tap the other one just to keep tapping foundations down. Right. I had I had the blank card in my hand to do it with the Petty Squabble, and right. eventually it just didn't matter. But having that extra little bit of defense to live and still being able to kill people on turn two, I think is actually the peak of what this format is right now. Yeah, I completely agree. I, 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 have, I have said it, and I, I, I think... I think that you are playing the best deck in the format, truthfully. Oh, thank uh, you. I, I, I believe it. I, I think you're playing the best deck. Um, uh, and I was talking to Jeremy Ray. I know you're a big fan. Um, and he said that he disagrees with me. And the only reason is because he thinks that going second as Kirishima, it's easier to survive. And it's just as easy to kill. Um, what are your thoughts on why didn't you play Kirishima at this event? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think specifically with the Kirishima is, although the Earth symbol can be very defensive, the Earth Kirishima lists that we're kind of seeing a lot of are not that very defensive. And I might be wrong, you have more eyes on the entire tournament as a whole, but like they're not playing the resistances in their deck. They're, they're, any card that says plus a damage is probably in their deck at some point, or plus right. the speed. And the Kirishima Earth version that wants to play just a few defensive cards, like my Tokoyami deck is doing, just a few defensive cards is not the same as that version of that deck. Um, I also believe being a seven-hander is very important, I think, right now in this format. Um, or like these pseudo-sevens or characters like Sato and Kirishima that can cycle draw, which is like seeing an, as many as seven cards. It's right. like six and a half, right? Six and a half. Um, Wink. So I would say the biggest thing for Kirishima is under the Earth symbol, it's just a very different kind of play style. It's more right. like board control, I would yeah. say. Flipping foundation, seizing the advantage is a big win for that deck right now. Um, and it gives it speed for a, a deck and a character that already gives damage. And it's just a very nice extra touch. But I would say overall as a whole, the foundation package for me to play the defensively I want, you sacrifice a lot of offense. And I felt like in the Chaos Tokoyami deck, because I'm a seven-hander, I'm not sacrificing as much offense to play the defensive cards. Correct. Encouraging training partner is used offensively and defensively. We saw it in the last match, right? Yep. I, you put a, a it was one more speed move. Speed. To four, and that's what that's what pushed it over it's the that edge. that one extra point. And I it's, love it. I, I've done it all the time, and it's funny because too, because a lot of these four base speed attacks that I am playing, things like Crow and Frog and uh, Ruins and all these other ones that are uh, uh, Ice Storm, they come in with the two two from like two um, two of the Summit Arc Shadows, mm -hmm. and they do some sort of thing to neg it, like below, right. and I can set it back to four and then pump then up some pump more right up. or play another summit dark shadow so yeah. it's again it's just like it's this back and forth of stats that i feel like the format can really kind of do uh, i think jacob put a very very fine example of it specialist the sounds are very hard for my deck to deal with i played against an air dinky last round and the speed hate is huge and i earth doesn't have that i don't think right. really a no, lot no, of it no, no, no. It's, it's a lot of resetting shock um, absorption or nothing right 
Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's I mean, and that's the thing. It's like those cards, like you're so obvious that I would want to play in a Kirishima deck. They just don't get you there sometimes offensively. Yeah. Um. So that was probably what set me apart specifically from that choice of an aggro deck. I would have loved to have played a played a racer head. Um. But it's nine rounds, and that's pretty tiring to be honest. Sure. But I love that character. I love that deck, and I think Void can do it. Um. But I settled on this Chaos Tokiomi today, and uh, I'm very happy that I did. I've had a very good day. Love that. Whether it's having fun or having shorter rounds. I had, a, I had an hour and ten minutes for lunch today. Wowzers. <laughs> you went, I'm sure you went to like a nice fancy restaurant. Absolutely like, not. Like an Applebee's or something. No, no, no. <laughs> um, any last minute uh, shout outs you want to give before uh, before we get you out of here so you can enjoy the rest of your 45 minute break? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to for sure shout out uh, Legendary Wolf Games. Um, they've taken care of me and from the Omaha area and just in general a very long time. Uh, I want to shout out to TCG University. Started with them. I know you were originally there. That's how we met. And, um, and then with my personal playtest buddies and my best friends. Uh, Jeremy Ray for being a very good tutor and me explaining things early on in the game and now he's working for the company that I love the game that's so so much and so that's a big one Kyle Wright who is doing fantastic he's he so was good. on the stream last night. I'm so proud of that kid because like he's my best friend in the entire world and he doesn't live in the same city as me so I'm so glad he's doing so well Jacob Johnson is actually a really good friend of mine I just played against last round um, shout out to Tamron Cardwell not only are you the number one content creator in all of universes um, but playtest partner uh, deck tech, specifically even with this Chaos Tokiomi list, uh, for sure. Oh, this is sick, Christopher dude. Bromley this is and Unfun sick. Stuff, uh, Phil Birch, all the other, all the boys, and uh, Nilmerg for judging. Hey. What a good judge she is. Good sport as well. Big fan of Nilmerg. Mm -hmm. But that would be it. That's my that's my list. Hey, thank you, Barry, and congratulations again, man. Um, you're locked for tops. I think you can take absolutely. A draw here I can and... lose or draw. I think actually, yeah. and I make it. So with that said, we've got round nine coming at you soon. We're gonna take a small break. Don't go anywhere.